Hello everybody again. Today I want to talk about self-organizing teams and specifically the word complicated versus complex. Now I want to talk about a common language. Quite often when we talk about complex or complicated we often interchange the words. We often say hey well that's a complex thing to manage or that's pretty complicated. But actually, if we sit and think about the meanings of those two words, complicated versus complex, and specifically from an engineering and organizational perspective, they really are two different things that require two different methods to manage them. Okay, so now I would like to talk about the word complicated, and specifically in engineering and business terms. Now, when we talk about complicated, we often mean really too much information for us to process in one time. Now you know the old thing, you can only remember seven things at once, you know, the short-term memory. In a way, it's an extension of that from the human brain. There's just too much information for us. So how do we manage complicated things? Well, we do reductionists. We break them down into smaller parts. And those smaller parts, by putting them into smaller parts, we're able to understand the whole. An easy example is, say, a combustion engine. A combustion engine is complicated. There are many parts to it, but we can start to understand the combustion engine by simply looking at the different parts of the engine, from the crankshaft to the injectors to the spark and so on. The other thing about complicated systems is they are linear in nature. Their input and outputs can be predicted. With an input to the system, we're able to predict the output of the system. And that's another important attribute when we talk about complicated systems. Now I would like to talk about complex systems. And I want to introduce a term, complex adaptive systems. Now, complex adaptive systems is whereby the sum of the parts are far greater than the parts themselves. Now, if we take complicated systems, really the complexity of a complicated system is simply the number of parts you have. But complex adaptive systems, the parts themselves may be simple, but when you put them together, you get a very complex system. Now, what exactly does that mean? Or what examples can we use for complex adaptive systems? Well, the first thing is they are non-linear in nature, and it's not possible to predict them. The other attribute of complex adaptive systems from an organizational perspective is there is no leader. There is a certain set of guidelines that each component, or not guidelines, but if you like rules that each component does, but there is no leader. They come from the bottom up. And that's a very important part of complex systems. So it'll become much clearer when we just think of some simple examples. So imagine a flock of birds. Now, if you've seen them sometimes in the autumn time, or you may have often seen birds migrating. It's really amazing to see all those birds seemingly together. Now, you don't have a standard organizational structure. You don't have bird CEO or foreman CEOs managing all the birds flying around. Each bird has a set of rules, if you like, you know, collision rules, proximity rules, staying in a certain position. And based on those rules, combined together, you create this incredible system that seems to be all working in symphony, yet there is no leader. Now, this is very important when we talk about self-organizing teams. Because when we talk about self-organizing teams, quite often we're aiming to try and create that system. Because the other attribute of this system is this system adapts to the environment. It adapts to change. These interconnections work together to move to a different environment or move towards or away from whatever might be threatening them in terms of meeting their goal from the environment. But there is no leader. And I think that's one of the most important aspects of a self-organizing team is that you have this ability to adapt and change and you allow the team to create their own interconnections. So now I want to leave this final part and talk about the kind of problems that we tend to face in industry versus complicated versus complex. Now, if you have a complex system, a problem that is complex, the way you need to manage it is by allowing your team to work more and shape themselves more to the environment they're in. And what you don't want to do in such a complex system is create more a hierarchical structure. 
And what tends to happen, they call it the vicious circle of complexity in teams, is quite often a company is in trouble, they're facing a, a difficult problem, so they add more people. And they see that this isn't working and they're adding more people. But actually what they're doing is they're adding to their complexity. They're trying to use the, you know, the reductionist approach by having, you know, command and control centers, more and more people. But what's actually doing is creating the system more complex and you need a complex adaptive mindset in order to manage it rather than a reductionist command and control little, little armies that you might see from the Napoleon times. You need a very different approach to manage it. And that's kind of quite often the mistakes and challenges of a self-organizing team is that we often been used to in industry in using these very much reductionist standard organizational structures. Whereas when we're managing highly complex systems, as in the case now of modern software, we need to use the shape like the birds. Look at how the birds manage migration. There is no boss, there is no leader yet through the system of complex adaption, they're able to migrate thousands of miles to other places. And this is the type of approach that we should use when we're thinking of complex adaptive teams. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and also subscribe, it really helps. So until next time, bye bye.